2004 is arguably the best year for rom-coms and teen flicks, and with iconic movies like Cinderella Story, 13 Going on 30, Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen, and The Prince and Me, MGM execs sat in a conference room to figure out how they were going to contribute, and they came up with Sleepover. What does Drake and this comb have in common? What does Leo and this comb have in common? What does Sleepover and this comb have in common? I'm not being dramatic. And I wanted to call the police several times. Uh, just, just, just roll the fucking intro, okay? In Sleepover, our protagonist, Julie, AKA Spy Kids girl, Alexa Vega, is finishing up her last day of eighth grade. As soon as the final bell rings, all the kids are so excited for summer and they're throwing papers everywhere. I mean, just look at this Yahoo. Why did he do that? This guy is Mr. Corrado and he's the English teacher. He gets sprayed in the face with silly string. Isn't that so silly? Oh my God. All right, let's introduce all the characters who are gonna piss me off for the next hour and a half. Julie is Spy Kids girl, the main character. We know her. Hannah is Julie's bestie and she's moving away after summer ends. And she, you know, that's a real bummer and all, but she's also my least favorite character in the movie. So I'm kind of glad she's moving. Farah is the one with the hat. She's the fashionista. And uh, Stacy is that girl from Aquamarine and Great Value Marnie from Halloween Town. You know, the one we don't talk about. And Liz is Stacy's bestie. They are both assholes. And then there's Yancey. So Yancey is the movie fat girl, the brownie eating sad fat girl. And I say this because she serves no other purpose in the movie except talking about how overweight she is and eating brownies, which I'm sure helped a lot of young girls self-confidence at the age of nine. Why they gotta do her dirty like that? Julie organized an end of the year slumber party with the friends, but Hannah tells Julie that Liz is also going to have a slumber party the same night. And this is like a big deal because Stacy, you know, the big meanie, that means that she is probably gonna go to Liz's slumber party instead of hers. Which I don't get why they would be upset about this because it seems like they hate Stacy. So like, why do they care? Speak of the devils. But anyways, Liz calls Yancey a fat girl and the girls are like, oh, poor Yancey. And they give her a pity invite. Yancey, my father's a lawyer. He can help you sue the diet pill company for non-performance. Do you want to come to my sleepover? Me? Then we meet these young gentlemen who are all aggressively stupid. Why didn't anyone tell me Evan Peters is in this movie? Like American Horror Story Evan Peters. Like Jeffrey Dahmer Evan Peters. He plays a character named Spongebob. And he's always trying to show people photos of him in a coma, but he woke up after like three hours. Last chance to see a picture of me in a coma. Three hours. But anyways, they find out that they're having a sleepover, so you know there's gonna be some teen shenanigans later in the movie. Yeah. Keep it up, Spongebob. On the way home from school, Stacy tells Julie that she can't go to her sleepover because she's going to the high school dance with her boyfriend. Her high school boyfriend, that is. Then this movie does that over-explaining thing where Julie talks about how her and Stacy used to be besties until Stacy became popular. How did Stacy get so popular anyways? We used to be best friends. So original. Oh, and we need to talk about Julie's priorities in this movie. So she's about to be in high school and her BFF is moving away. So her main concern is that she's going to be all alone in high school and that she's going to be a big loser. And the thing that determines how cool you are is apparently where you sit at lunch. There it is, the high school lunch spot. And all the cool kids sit by the fountain and all the dweebs sit by the trash. And there's where I'll be sitting, cool, <laughs> uncool. <laughs> yeah, Julie, all those kids over there can just go f themselves. Then Julie notices the love interest in this movie who is way too old for her. Steve is so plush. I'm sorry, what did you say? Jane Lynch plays Julie's mom in the movie and she was honestly the only enjoyable part for me. Oh, we have a million things to do before the party, Julie. We are having a ladybug party. Ladybug plates and a ladybug pinata. Julie's brother is an adult who lives at home and is really dumb. Uh, he dropped out of college and her dad is also dumb, but basically all the men in this movie are painfully dumb. Someone stole my bike. 
He's like eating peanut butter with his fingers like a toddler. Dad is gonna be the one watching the girls while mom is having a night out. I hate to spoil it for you, but he's going to remain completely clueless throughout the entire movie because he's too busy playing with a sink or something. Aquifer system. Oh, honey, why don't you just relax tonight? Our water's fine. Fine, fine. Let's just take a look at our water. And this slumber party starts off really harmless. They're just painting their nails, they're having a little dance party, and they're doing makeovers. I mean, it looks very plush. We cut over to Stacy in the car with her boyfriend who were supposed to be going to the dance, but he has other plans that involves assault. You promised, you promised when you graduated we would hook up. Get off me. But she says, uh-uh, not today, and he tells her to leave. So with nowhere to go, Stacy calls Liz and is like, sorry, I can't sneak y'all into the dance, but I have another idea. Make a list. I have new funness in mind. Start making a list. List of what? Terrible fat jokes? Another fun character that we have in this movie is the police officer, who is played by Steve Carell, who shows up at Julie's house because they're playing their music too loud. And he is also an idiot. It's a Coke. Ah, ta, 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 ta. But surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise! Stacy shows up and tells the girls that her and Liz are putting together an illegal scavenger hunt. Yes, you heard that right. Oh, and Yancey gets called out again for using too much self-tanner. Like, homegirl just can't catch a break. Oh my god, Yancey, you are orange. You use too much Presto tan. We just gave each other thongs with our names on them. <laughs> Wicked, one for me? But yeah, this list is really alarming. So like some of it's silly, like dressing a store mannequin in your own clothes and stealing a decal from the patrol officer's car. But one of the dares is literally getting a grown adult from a dating website to buy them an alcoholic drink at a club. Have a guy from datesafe.com buy you a drink at the Cosmo Club. Oh. Borrow a pair of Steve Phillips boxer shorts? No, 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 no. Who was responsible for that? So up until now, doing these tasks seem pretty pointless, right? Like, why would you want to go on a dating website and do that? But Hannah opens her big mouth and she makes a bet that whoever wins gets to sit at the fountain at lunch and whoever loses has to sit at the dumpsters. Winning group eats at the fountain next year and losers eat at the dumpsters. Hannah, you're literally moving away. Stop talking. So Julie talks to Hannah and she's like freaking the fuck out. But Hannah is like, Julie, if you don't do these things, then Steve won't like you. Steve is the skateboard guy, but uh, great advice, Hannah. She goes on to say that it's not just about a lunch spot. It's about who she's gonna be in high school. Do you think he eats by the dumpsters? You could be sitting right next to him at the fountain. And plus, if you don't do this, everyone's gonna hear about it. I wanna give this movie an award for being the single most shallow tween movie in existence. Julie bribes her brother to cover for them while they sneak out. I had a dream about these. They were trying to kill me. I think I have a fever. And now they are catfishing a stranger into buying a drink for them at the club. I'm alarmed at the thought of how many nine-year-olds who watched this movie probably thought it was okay to make a fake dating profile on the internet. But they immediately match with the man, and on the dating website, they have like this blue ribbon to indicate that the person is safe to date. I'm sure all of this is perfectly fine. And then Liz strolls up, illegally driving a vehicle to pick up Stacy. And you lose. <laughs> we'll get a car, and we'll get the fountain spot. Pleathers. Okay, Hannah, I need you to gently throw yourself off of a cliff. Idiot. Then Julie gets all dressed up for the club, but she looks like a 14 year old in her mom's dress. But don't worry, cause Hannah uses her DIY crafting skills to fix her outfit. Wow, congrats, Julie. You still look like a 14 year old in your mom's dress. So the teens are sneaking out and they're jumping on this rickety gondola thing. No, not a gondola. It's like, it's a, it's a pergola. <laughs> I am, I am silly. Julie falls through it and her dad doesn't even look up cause he's like too busy messing with the sink. Initially the teens were worried that they weren't gonna be able to find a way into the club, but Yancey finally makes herself useful and offers her parents electric vehicle that's supposed to be used for emergencies. My dad taught me how to drive it in the mall parking lot. Said I could use it for an emergency, which it kind of seems like this is. I'm sure there's nothing that could go wrong with a bunch of 14 year olds operating an automobile without a license. But just as things were going to plan, SpongeBob and his goons come skateboarding up the sidewalk and they climb up the window to Julie's brother's room. 
He doesn't react either. He just walks them over to Julie's room so they can like look at her underwear or something. <laughs> iPhone bras. Yeah. Uh, but they knock something over. So dad decides to go check on the girls and you know, really quick, all the boys have to figure something out. So they decide to dress up like the Spice Girls and start dancing. Oh boy, that was close. SpongeBob notices the scavenger hunt open on Julie's computer and he decides to follow them. And now Yancey is talking about how no cute guys wave at her because she's fat. And you want to know what the f Hannah says? Yancey, would you rather eat celery or a brownie? What is that, a trick question? Exactly. So you'll just date guys who like brownies. Hey fatty, would you rather eat celery or brownies? What kind of question is that? And you know what pisses me off? Is that Yancey is actually beautiful. And she's just the fat character. That's it. The brownie eating little fat girl named Yancey. I just imagine the MGM executives going, hey guys, let's write a fat character and name her something stupid like Yancey. And let's just shit all over her, okay? Let's let's push her on oncoming traffic. Let's kidnap her and leave her stranded in the middle of a forest. This poor girl auditioned for a movie only to be the fat girl in front of millions of people. And it only gets worse, I'm sorry. They get to Old Navy and they're changing the clothes on the mannequins, um, you know, like the silly dare that they have. And no one bats an eye at these teenagers just chilling out, including Steve Carell. Um, and every time he looks over, they like freeze in place. <laughs> How did they get him in this movie? They get to the club, and I just want to quickly point out that Yancey is a pretty good driver for an eighth grader. <laughs> they try and get into the club, but SpongeBob comes running up, and the bouncer's taking one look at these kids and going, y'all look like a bunch of middle schoolers, and you need to go away. But Hannah notices some men bringing equipment into the back, and they decide to sneak in one of the boxes. So they get in there. Julie and Hannah notice Stacy got some guys to buy her a drink, and this is already weird. <laughs> But wait, it gets weirder. It turns out that the guy that Julie catfished on the internet is her English teacher, Mr. Corrado. He approaches her and she puts on some like sunglasses to hide her identity, which fooled him because he's an idiot. Presumably he's been teaching her for an entire school year and he doesn't even recognize her voice. He's trying to buy her a drink and she's like, yeah, I would like one alcohol, please. Then he finally figures out it's her, and what's crazy is that he sounds excited. Julie! <laughs> like he's about to like beat on his chest like an orangutan. We get it. Do you teach because you love kids, right? I would love it if Chris Hansen stepped in. It was like, take a seat. Then she explains the whole scavenger hunt thing to him and is like, can you take a picture of me next to you holding a drink at a club? <laughs> you thought that was gonna ruin your day? Just wait. Okay, because it's going to get worse. Yancey's waiting outside. Uh, she gets approached by a grown man who I guess is like a stagehand or something. He's he's a literal adult. Okay, and he has googly eyes for Yancey. Mind you, she's 14 and he has to be at least 23. No, I don't have a boyfriend. Playing hard to get? Ew, 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 ew. Why? Why? What the hell, bro? Why? This is, this, this right here is like Predator 101, Yancey. He's talking to you because you're young, really young. Not because you're mature for your age, okay? Not because, not because he actually likes you. It's because he is a predator. And then he leaves. And this is supposed to be like this moment where Yancey realizes her self-worth getting hit on by a grown ass man. This photo right here would make headlines and not the good kind. It'd be all over CNN. Teacher of the year um, buys a 14 year old drink at a club. Hannah gives Mr. Corrado some tips to be more good looking, which ends up just being her taking off his glasses and messing up his hair, <laughs> which immediately draws interest amongst the ladies. Mom, by the way, is straight up slaying at the club. And this is everything. I want to party with Jane Lynch. I want to have a ladybug party with Jane Lynch. Julie and Hannah, they dip out and Julie dropped her mom's scarf earlier, I guess. And mom finds it. So now mom is suspicious because she's like, why is my scarf on the ground? <laughs> she even like kind of sees them running away. So she's like, I'm, I'm going to try calling them, making I'm going to make sure that I'm not crazy. But she has no reception. So she needs to use the payphone. The payphone is being held up by this woman who has no plans to move. So the teens, they go to the car, but they find out that the car is like stuck between two other cars. So they have to find out other plans. And SpongeBob and his goons come up with the skateboards. So they're like, oh, we'll just take the skateboards back home. 
Steve is on his way home and he's in the car and he notices Julie on the skateboard and he's so head over heels for this 14 year old. Who was that? Dad's still messing with the sink and mom calls asking to talk to the girls. Um, so they have to like book it, right? They have to get back home. Julie makes it and she notices that the pergola is destroyed because SpongeBob broke it and Julie's got to get creative getting up there. No, turn off! Do it! She makes it. She talks to her mom who is convinced that she's losing her mind because she just saw her daughter and Hannah run out the club. But she got her. So after fooling mom, she sneaks out again to go to Steve's house to like steal his underwear. And uh, Steve's house is looking nice. I mean, he's got money. But Yancey says the car ran out of battery and she needs to go plug it in. They all say that Julie should go be the one to get the underwear because she has a crush on him. And it's just, this whole thing is just weird. I can't do this. Let's go home. We lose. You are Julie. Great knees, powerful brain. Great knees, powerful brain. What? So I guess that statement apparently gave her the courage to commit a literal crime. Liz and Stacy are still in the lead with the scavenger hunt. They find a pair of Steve's boxers in his gym bag in the car. Patrol tech security, please. Julie sneaks in and she's like smelling his shoes or something, but he comes walking up and she hides in the shower. While she's hiding, Steve is so hyper fixated on that girl on the skateboard and is looking through all of his old yearbooks to like try and find out who it was. And then he realizes that he knew her when she was in elementary school. And he's like, wow, she grew up nice. She grew up nice. What the f are you? What? Then she watches him take his clothes off in the bathroom. I, I actually hate this. I actually, I actually hate this. Um, and it gets, it gets worse. We cut to Yancey and the girls pushing her smart car into Steve Carell's patrol car. Cause they're like trying to plug in the car to an outlet, but it doesn't like reach or something. Steve Carell notices that Julie's escaping the house. So she starts, he starts confronting her because she looks suspicious. She's got like some guy's underwear, you know what I mean? Meanwhile, the girls manage to move the 2004 smart car and charge it in the span of five minutes. Steve Carell calls the house and he assumes that Julie's brother is her father. So she just, she got away with it. She, you know, he tried calling and, and her brother saved the day. I had to hurt myself and I'm wearing red pumps. Yancey comes driving up and Julie like hops in, but before she does, she like steals the decal on Steve Carell's car. Ah! They noticed the mean girls getting smoothies on the way to the dance, by the way. And um, because I guess they were confident they were going to win, but they were wrong. So now it becomes a showdown to who can get to the dance first and win the lunch spot. They end up tying and the mean girls demand a tiebreaker because they don't want to share the lunch spot with some losers. So the tiebreaker is whoever gets the crown at the dance wins. And it could be like the king or queen crown. I guess they're at prom, I'm not really sure. They also notice Todd's car at the dance who was Stacy's boyfriend and they all call Stacy out on her lie. Um, but Stacy gets offended and runs off, you know, because like earlier in the movie, Stacy said that her and Todd decided to skip the dance, but that's obviously not true. Todd and I hooked up, so we decided to skip the dance. Okay. They go inside. They're stopped by ticket counter girl and Julie is like, I'm sorry, we don't have tickets. We're in eighth grade. Ticket girl is like, I'm sorry, you can't go in. But then Julie makes this inspirational speech about how she's a loser because she's out there collecting tickets instead of being at the dance. And if she doesn't let the girls in the dance, then Julie will be a loser too. You're out here collecting tickets instead of being inside at the dance. And you've never eaten anywhere near the fountain. And in four years, I will be you unless I get into that dance. And the girl was so moved by her insulting speech. She's like, go get him, tiger. Be a teenager. We don't find out what happens to Ticket Girls. I don't think she gets a redemption. <laughs> they all get in there and SpongeBob is dancing like a crackhead. Steve is very distracted because he can't stop thinking about Skateboard Girl, which is Julie. And he asks someone about her and the guy is like, wait, wasn't she on like the elementary school bus? <laughs> Wasn't she on her grade school bus? Yes. She looks sweet. Nice one. But oh no, we see Stacy's boyfriend kissing another girl. Stacy goes up to confront him and she slaps him. And you'd think that the girl he was kissing would be mad at him too. But she goes up to Stacy and she's like, um, who are you? I've been his girlfriend for six months. He cheated on you with an eighth grader. And they, they start beating the shit out of each other. And I'm thinking, why aren't you mad at Todd? 
Todd cheated and neither of you knew about each other. <laughs> SpongeBob sticks up for Stacy and she's like, ooh. And the mean pick me girl is like, oh, I guess you don't have anyone to enter the dance contest with. Cause I guess there's a dance contest. And, and Stacy decides to enter the dance competition with SpongeBob. I just want to pause for a second and ask, like, why did they make SpongeBob like this? Why is his name SpongeBob? They could have just made him a little awkward, but I feel like his portrayal is borderline <laughs> offensive. <laughs> During the dance off, SpongeBob drops the scavenger hunt paper and Steve finds it. And he reads the part about Julie, like needing to find his boxer shorts or something, which I would immediately find weird but he notices julie and he's just so floored by this eighth grader so i guess he doesn't I, I guess this just doesn't matter i guess he didn't really care that she broke into his house to find his underwear i don't know stacy and spongebob win the dance contest and all of a sudden stacy is being really nice to spongebob she takes a picture with him and just when you thought that yancey couldn't get pushed down even more hannah for some reason who hasn't has barely spoken three words in this movie. She tells Yancey that the only reason that she was invited to this lumber party is because Stacy couldn't come. So Yancey now feels like a total piece of shit. All of a sudden, the band is like, we'd like to dedicate this song to Yancey. And they play this slow song. You might be thinking, who would have arranged that? Who, who could have arranged this uh, dedication to a song? Oh yeah, the literal adult at a school dance. The same guy from before. Okay, y'all. My night was ruined. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh my God. Are you for real? Someone for everything. No. Can you believe this? Do you like brownies? Are you kidding? Brownies are a very important food group. Oh my God. Anyways, Steve won the crown and he immediately calls out into the audience for Julie because he wants to dance with her. Again, he's a, like obsessed with this eighth grader. And now she has the crown, which means that she has the lunch spot. Yay. Uh, Steve and Julie are having this moment, but then Julie finds out that her mom is on the way home, so they have to like book it. They get on this old tree fort and Julie tries to climb on a rope to get back into her room, but the tree fort just immediately crashes into her room. Dad, by the way, doesn't go to check on this sound that would, he, he would absolutely hear. He's distracting mom with the sink that he fixed and he like wants her to taste the water or something. I'm thinking like, wouldn't, wouldn't mom and dad hear that? Uh, Julie and her friends, they sneak back into the room, completely fooled mom and dad, right? The next morning, Julie's dad is talking about how the tree fort finally came down and destroyed the pergola. So I like- You know, I always knew that old fort would come down one day. I just didn't think it would take the arbor down with it. He knew it happened. He was just more concerned about his, about the water. Also, Julie, I know you did not wake up with that perfect blowout hairstyle. Okay, do not, do not even try to fool us. Do you think, do they think that we're dumb? Mom is on to Julie, by the way. She's like, okay, spill the beans. What were you all doing up in the club? Because I, I found this scarf. The thing is. The thing is, no, 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 no. The thing is, I'm literally taking away everything. Phone, computer will to live do you know how grounded i would be i i think i would be locked i would be locked in a dungeon i would i would not be able to see light for six months but no mom is fine she doesn't question anything she doesn't even lecture her about how she how she could have been abducted or or killed nothing nothing and then Julie goes back to her room. She sees Steve's crown hanging on the busted ass tree fort. And I forgot to mention the fact that she dropped uh, Steve's crown on the road, but Steve brought it back to her, right? What if he fell through the tree fort? <laughs> and the movie ends with Stacy and Liz sitting with the nerds by the dumpsters. Stacy's like screaming because there's trash everywhere. And if there's anything that we've learned from this movie, it's absolutely nothing. We, we learn nothing from this movie, except it's creepy as hell. So yeah, that was the worst movie I've ever seen. Does anyone else remember how predatory and problematic this movie was? Because I didn't. I thought it was like a silly tween flick. And I think I just feel the most for Yancey because she just got the shaft this entire movie. Like only at the end did she end up with a grown man to reassure her self-worth justice for yancey this movie creeped me out like uh, everything about it just the just the the vibe the feeling like someone sat and and wrote this someone sat 
and thought, we're going to make this movie for eight, nine, ten year olds. And we're going to have Spy Kids Girl in it. If y'all like this video, please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.